This is the Bolori Blue car, also known as the Blue SG car. And today, we are going to find out more about it because electric is the future. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just want you to know that this video was not sponsored in any way at all and done entirely on our own. And now, let's get to the video. So what exactly is Blue SG? Launched in 2017, Blue SG is a subsidiary of the Bolori Group, owner of the world's largest car sharing service known as Auto Lee. Blue SG's aim is to provide electro-mobile transport solutions in Singapore. At the moment, they are operating a fully electric vehicle car sharing service in Singapore designed to complement the island's public transport services. So being the tech savvy company that they are, all you need to do is sign up an account, wait for their approval, and you're good to go. So signing up is fairly straightforward. You go to the Blue SG website, you sign up, join now, you create an account, you submit your NRIC and your driving license, and you wait a few days for them to approve it. On approval, you will receive a one-time pin for pairing an EasyLink card with any one of the stations. I left my card in the car. This is mine. And with that done, it's time to find a car. So Blue SG provides a real-time car search system where you can locate the nearest car to you and you can even book it on the spot. They also provide you step-by-step -step instructions on how to collect the car with your EasyLink card. Now the first thing I noticed when I actually got into this car is how high it really is. This car looks very small from the outside but seated inside, you actually feel like you're almost in an SUV or a crossover or something like that. So it does help give a pretty good view of the road, of the surrounding, everything at the expense of feeling sporty. Although I hope that's not why you're renting one of these. We have had enough incidents with these cars involved. The seat has just basic adjustments. Forward, back, uh, height adjust, and a little wheel that you turn to tilt the back, forward and back. This dashboard is so basic let me just show you, alright? Look, there, there's literally nothing in front of you. Nothing on the dashboard at all, except for this little digital meter here. But it's actually not a bad meter. Eh? It actually shows you everything you need to know. Um, like, yeah, it tells you how to change the gear. Uh, it shows you your battery percentage, the time, the temperature outside. I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Uh, not my mileage. And whether the door's locked or not, I think something like that and when you drive it shows a big number that is your speed what speed you're going I think that's the most important thing letting people know how fast they're going and how what they shouldn't be doing and let's have a look at the controls down here you have your simple handbrake you have your gear lever uh, you have your GPS that doubles up as a radio and you can actually use this to locate the charging station for you to park back air conditioner controls um, yeah there's even a call button to call for help with blue sg if you for some reason need some help look even a usb port and of course the basic 12 volt charger this is like the most basic gear lever i've ever seen it's basically forward back no go and just very basic very simple compartments, big open compartments and they didn't even have a glove box all they had was a little cubby here which I think is a great idea because then you won't forget anything that you left behind because you can see everything, nothing is hidden Well, sitting in the back, the rear leg room is unsurprisingly not very spacious but still enough for my long legs I'm 1.8 meters tall and this is my normal driving position so yeah, not too bad actually. Due to the hatchback design, headroom is not too bad either. I can safely seat two adult passengers inside here, but I won't go for three. Actually, you just might be able to get three in. Squeeze. And nah. I originally wanted to get into the back of the boot, then I realized how small it was. Yeah, it's fine for your normal grocery shopping. They'll be fine. Uh, you don't get any space on 
the right side but you do get some space below here and that's about it uh, the seats can fold down no that's not it the seats can fold down for a bit more space although i don't know why it's work not working nice thing about these back seats is that they come with isofix so that you don't have to worry about child seats and now for the driving of this car how does it really drive i think that's what everyone really wants to know or at least most of the people who are interested in watching this first thing i would have to say is that it's surprisingly sluggish for an electric car it actually feels quite heavy uh, it, it doesn't have that instantaneous torque that you would expect of an electric car and also one thing to note is that they made the accelerator pedal very very stiff they, they put a very strong spring on it so i think that's maybe to prevent people from stepping on it too quickly and yeah but it's already feeling quite underpowered so i don't see a real big point in doing that as for handling it corners surprisingly well especially for the the dimensions of this is like very tall narrow very chubby size but the springs are actually really quite stiff it hardly rolls in the corners i mean i know some cars that actually roll a lot more than this and yeah it's actually pretty nice also the high view really helps with visibility i don't know why people still can crash this car the brakes feel pretty all right like normal car brakes nothing special there this engine is rated at 67 horsepower and yeah it does feel like a 67 horsepower engine on the highway it can easily go up to highway speeds i haven't actually tested the maximum so really there's nothing much exciting about the drive of this car it just gets you from point a to point b it doesn't have that instantaneous torque that you expect of an electric motor in fact i think my 1.2 liter car feels a lot more powerful than this and it's a lot more fun to drive and i'm gonna do a review on that very soon okay cornering cornering one annoying thing about driving this car is that it's very noisy and i'm not talking about road noise i'm talking about the electric motor normally you expect an electric car to be silent i mean or at least the hybrids that i've driven are like completely silent but this has a very annoying bearing whirring sound from the bearing or from from whatever and it's not just this car it's the same for every single blue sg car that i have tested so far although i must say i'm, I'm i am quite impressed by the handling because it, it really rolls very little for the hype so how much does it cost well you pay a monthly subscription of eight dollars for the basic subscription and it's 33 cents a minute thereafter which roughly works out to around 20 dollars an hour for power users they do offer additional plans that provide additional savings but it ties you down to a six-month contract in comparison to their rival car sharing services i did try to draw up a comparison chart but i gave up after a while because i found that the various plans across the different services are just too complex to give a straightforward ranking of which is the most value for money it really depends on the specific use case and situation that you need a car for now blue sg may not be the cheapest one around but it is definitely one of the most convenient and it's perfect for short one to two hour trips where you simply need a basic personal form of transportation with the ability to carry some additional cargo small cargo maybe even small furniture grocery shopping and the like now on paper it 20 dollars an hour may not sound like the cheapest in fact it may sound quite expensive but if you take into account that other car sharing services do require you to pay for your fuel and also charge you for the mileage that you do on top of the basic rental that you are paying it could actually work out to be a much better option so who is this service for i would say this is for the person who has an ad hoc need for a personal car uh, to transport whatever it is for maybe a couple of hours 
traveling from point A to point B and nothing more. The interior of the car is pretty comfortable for what it is, although I would say that it's not something that you would want to be in for long trips, which is really not the purpose of this car. For short trips around the city, around the island, this is perfectly fine. And with that, we wrap up our review of the Blue SG car. I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe below if you did and let us know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time.